video, we saw how to embed variables into our URLs. Now we're going to take a look at how to create more dynamic URLs in Sinatra. In the last video, we saw how to create dynamic URLs by adding variables into the route names. Like in this example here, we have slash blog slash post with the variable ID embedded into the URL. Then we're able to access that through the params ID object. In this case, we're just looking up the post by the ID and returning it. But sometimes the dynamic portions of our URLs are a little more complicated than can be handled with a simple pattern like this. That's where splats come in handy. To use a splat in a URL, you simply use an asterisk. So let's create the most generic URL that we can. We'll do get, and we'll do a forward slash, and then we'll put a splat or an asterisk, and then we'll define our block. Now, when the asterisk is used in a route, what it does is it basically catches everything, including letters, numbers, slashes, or really any character. It's saying whatever it is, we'll accept that route. So by doing a slash and a star, we're saying that literally any route that comes through would match this pattern. We can actually get the value of the dynamic part of the URL that is caught by the splat by loading params splat. So we can inspect it by loading up params, and we'll put splat. And just so that we can see it in our browser, I'm going to call the dot inspect method. And what inspect does in Ruby is any object should have the inspect method. And when you call it, it will return a human readable form of that object. So when we flip over to our code and let's just type in something completely random. So let's just say random. We'll see that the splat parameter is an array with the string random. So let's put some other parts on here, uh, more slash stuff, and we we'll click OK. And so we can see that everything, including the slashes and all the different parts, are caught into this one string inside of this array. So from there, we could break that apart or inspect it or try to match it using any other more advanced type of matching to figure out what to do with this URL. Now, you'll notice that it's not just a string, it's an array with a string in it. And that's because you can have multiple splats inside of your URL. So for instance, if we had uh, slash splat, and then maybe something like slash uh, static, and then another slash splat, what this would do is it would match any route with anything so long as slash static appeared somewhere in it. So if we modify our URL to have slash static and some more stuff, we'll see that it broke up our URL around this slash static part because it already matched it. So our first splat is random more stuff, and then part two is some more stuff. So you can have multiple splats around pieces of static parts of your URL. I'm gonna go ahead and just comment this out. And let's look at how this might be used. So for instance, we have this get slash blog slash post slash ID and any URL for a post should just have this one variable here. But let's say if we don't find the correct post based on that ID, we want to show a special page, maybe showing similar posts or guessing at what post they would want. Well, in Sinatra, you can actually have multiple routes that would match the same URL. So for example, we could write this route, get slash blog slash post, and then put our splat to match anything that's like blog post, and then we'll create our block. And let's just paste in this string here and say we couldn't find and then just print out the splat. Obviously, you would want to do something a little more useful than that. So how would we actually get this to trigger? Well, when it receives the request, it'll go down all the routes in order and try to match it. So if we gave it the URL slash blog slash post slash foo, it would first try this route and then it would actually execute it. So let's say params ID would be foo, and in our find post method, if our slug here is foo, then we return this content here. Otherwise, it'll return nil. Now, let's say we passed in something else, like uh, not a real post. In this case, it wouldn't match this URL because it has multiple slashes and the ID wouldn't actually be acceptable for that, but it would for this URL since it's a splat. But let's say instead of a unrealistic URL, we gave it bar, which is a perfectly acceptable URL by this pattern, but it may not exist. So in this case, what we can do is use a special method called pass. 
And what pass will do is say that this route is not the correct route for these circumstances. And it'll actually stop execution right when it's called, and then it'll start looking for any other routes that would match. So if we called pass right here, it would always just pass down to this next one. So we want to put some conditional logic on it. So in this case, we're going to say pass unless the post and unless is just like if, but the opposite of it. So this, the pass will execute if post is false or nil or some other falsy value. So in this case, if we, they pass a slash bar at post will be nil and pass will be called. And all this code down here, line 13 would be skipped and we look for the next URL. So let's test that out. So let's go to slash blog slash post slash foo, and we can see our post content. But if we go instead to slash blog slash post slash bar, you can see we couldn't find bar. And if we have multiple slashes like baz, the splat will actually pick it up. So the splat helps us in this case in that we can actually handle URLs much more dynamically. In the next video, we'll take a look at handling 404 and other special cases in Sinatra.